Welcome everyone to another video and this one is the one I've been wanting to do for a while but didn't quite know how to format it so here we go. So what I thought I'd do is I was going to do a big ramble about my journey on Redbubble but I, you know how I waffle and I've really got to cut myself down and it, editing is it's mind-numbingly boring the amount I have to listen and re-listen and cut so there so I've, I've made it concise I'm gonna give you guys seven ways that you can implement into your strategy today to help you really start making sales on your Redbubble account so a little bit of context back in January February I was making probably 10 to 12 pounds a month on my Redbubble I made some massive changes at the end of February, beginning of March, and within a few weeks, I started seeing major, major, major increases in my sales. So March and April have been crazy for me, and hopefully that trend continues. So I've managed to put what I did in concise points. So I'm gonna take you through those seven steps that hopefully if you put into practice, there's no reason why you can't really start seeing a difference in your sales. So let's go. So number one, don't think these are all quick and easy steps. It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. It's going to take more time. It's going to take frustration. It's going to take motivation. Some days you just won't want to be like, I'm not getting anywhere. You've got to stick with it. You've got to think about this as a business would. You're not going to be rolling in the money initially but if you make these little steps over a period of time you'll start noticing a difference and as long as the trends keep going up you're successful so as long as you know your first month you make 10 pounds your next month you're on 20 sometimes yes you might dip down a little bit again but as long as the overall trend is going up you're getting there but it's going to take time don't give up after a few months because you think this is not worth it for me. Maybe it's not, maybe your time would be better spent elsewhere, but if you're really, really passionate about making Redbubble work, just realize it's not a get rich quick scheme by any standard. Give it the time it deserves and what you put in will ultimately be what you get out. Number two, create things that you would want to buy yourself. Now, I know some people approach the whole print-on-demand effort with what's trending, what can I jump in on, what can I make some money with, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but me, I'm a bit more of a perfectionist, and I like to think that everything that I create, I would be happy and proud to wear myself. Some designs are a bit... I don't want to see someone out in the real world, as unlikely as it would be, wearing one of my designs that I really, really cringe about. I want to make sure that everything that I create, I've put my effort in to make sure that it is something that someone can be proud to wear, that they're happy to wear what I've created and what they've bought. You're asking people to part with their money. Think of it, you've been a consumer all of your life. Think how you consume, how you search for things that you want to buy, how you buy. If something doesn't hit you in a passion of yours like you know if you're passionate about running and you've come across a really cool funny runny slogan show and that really really speaks to you you know that's that's that inclination to buy you hit people where it's where it matters to them and that's as simple as it gets so make stuff that you're proud of try and hit those niches where you you have a lot of knowledge so if you're into knitting or crochet you know, you know all the slang, all the weird little jokes, all the, the technical terms about that thing. So play on that. Sit and brainstorm about all funny knitting sayings and stuff that, um, that will resonate with someone else that has that same hobby. So in the beginning, I would always say stick to what you're really passionate about, the stuff that you know, and the stuff that you would buy yourself and be proud to wear. So point three is variation. So what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes you'll create something that you really like, but it, a lot of people might not like your color scheme or how you designed it or whatever. You can't please everyone. And I'm, I'm not saying, you know, design 
10 versions of the same thing in slightly different ways or put you know 10 versions with 10 different colors because for me black shirts are my biggest seller so I will always do a white version I make a lot of kind of emblem style biker patch designs uh, that can be just one color so I'll do a white version for black or dark colored shirts and then I will do a black version in case people want to get a lighter color shirt, like a white shirt. It just gives the customers, because they might really want to buy them, I think, oh, that's awesome. I just wish it wasn't bloody yellow. You know, give them some, some variation. And I found that through my variations of one design, I've sold all different versions of them. So that to me means that I've got sales extra sales on the same design purely because I offered another color or another variation of that design. Another point before we move on on variation as well is if I've created a simple text design for a shirt say and it, it you know it's vertically across the chest it might not translate as well on a phone cover so it will pretty much be in the middle here and very very small so I will do its own version where I literally just flip the text and make it lengthways across the phone. So be aware that you're not just designing for one thing, you're designing for multiple products. And if you need to make a slight change because that design appears a little bit better on that thing, do it, do it, do it, do it. Point four, still when I'm looking at sort of trending designs or doing some research on Redbubble, the amount of terrible designs I come across is astounding, but that's besides the point. The amount of designs I come across that have backgrounds is ridiculous and you see it so clearly so people have have not designed with a transparent background they've thought okay I don't need a transparent background because this is going to be printed on it's a black background it's going to be printed on a black shirt you still see it I see it from the small little little thumbnail image don't do it it looks so unprofessional always design with a transparent background export in PNG and make sure that your DPI is sufficient to the size that you're, you're printing to. These are, these are basic design practices that you have to have to follow if you're doing print on demand. Don't be one of those people, please. Point number five is another V, it's versatility. So I mentioned this a little bit in a couple of points ago about making sure that you might come into Redbubble with some awesome patterns that you design with the idea that you're only going to create for duvets and perhaps cushion covers or something like that. That's fine. Some people are killing it just doing that kind of stuff, just doing patterns on anything that a pattern can be applied to and kind of ignoring t-shirts and that kind of thing and dresses and whatever else. I would say when you're making a design, you've already put so, many, so much work into that design, it doesn't take too long to just amend it slightly so it fits on a shirt, so that it, it can be printed as a sticker, and make sure you're enabling as many products as possible. And I don't mean just enable them all, I mean enable them and make sure that each of those designs are optimized for that product. It really doesn't take too long, and when you've spent a long time on a design, Spend that little bit of time extra to make sure that each of the designs looks great on whatever product. You might design something that's really never going to work on, say, a phone case. That's fine. Just, just disable it. No problem. But for the most part, you want to make sure that every single one of your designs is enabled and optimized for every single product. You basically want to get the most chance to get a sale. Someone might love that, but they're like, oh, I want this as a duvet cover. It's only available on a shirt or as a sticker. Well, I'll find something else. Give yourself a chance. Do it. Point six is your keywords. Don't scrimp on your keywords. Redbubble gives you 50 keyword slots. Make sure, I'm not saying use all of them. I don't think I've ever in any of my designs managed to find 50 words to describe the art I'm trying to sell. But make sure you, you taking advantage of that. Most of the other like Etsy, TeePublic, you're given around 14, 13 or 14 words and sometimes that is just not enough and you really have to you know get to the core of what you're trying to sell but Redbubble give you 50. 
So go for it. Make sure you're writing really good descriptive titles. Descriptions. People leave their description blank so often. Write your description. Redbubble invest a lot of money into SEO, which means that if people search for a certain shirt or phone case on Google, very often you'll see a row of Redbubble designs come right at the top. So, and that gets pulled depending on the words that you've used in not just your keywords, but your description and your title. So make the most of this. Remember, Redbubble's giving you these tools. They, wanna, they want you to make sales because they make money too. So use what they're giving you. If you've got Google Analytics linked up to your Redbubble store, which I highly suggest you do, you'll be able to see where people are coming from and how they're finding your store. And the minute I started to take more of a notice and more care into writing good descriptions, I noticed I was getting more people from external sources coming in to my design directly. So use, use, use what they've provided us with. And of course, the other part of keywords is choosing the right keywords. You might be an established designer and you specialize in creating, you know, punk inspired 80s stuff. If you use the keyword punk, it's going to get swallowed because you've got to remember that there are a lot of people that use keywords that don't apply to their design at all. So punk starts getting applied to random stuff that has nothing to do with punk. And before you know it, people have commandeered that keyword that perfectly describes your work. And it means you have to be a little bit more clever in, in other keywords with the punk keyword. So it, yeah, it gets messy. It's kind of like what funny and cute and those kind of keywords, they just, it's almost as if they don't mean a thing anymore because everybody uses them that, are you wasting a space by putting it in? I don't know. But if you do use those kinds of keywords, make sure you're using better, I'm not saying rarer keywords because people aren't going to search for it, then there's no point using it. Try and think, okay, this is my niche. This is what I love. You know, I know so much about knitting, for example. Use words that other knitters will know about knitting. That's your word. That's specific to your design and make sure you're taking advantage of that and don't don't scrimp on it you've spent all this time on your design you've spent all this time making sure that it looks perfect on all the products and you get right to the bottom yeah no you're knackered by that you just want to get it live but don't don't fall at your final hurdle and just call it in on your keywords spend time do your research and put good keywords into each of your products and the last point, point number seven is, you guessed it, research. Research, research, research. So there is different ways you can tackle Redbubble. You can tackle it through trends. You can see what holidays are coming up, seasonal things, you know, current affairs, things that people are talking about in the real world that you might be able to translate and put it on a t-shirt that people will actually buy. You can follow this stuff, keep your mind open and just follow the trends that's perfectly fine. But be aware that trends are like this. It'll go up and down throughout the year. Or you can be an evergreen designer that will design stuff that will potentially always be searched for. So a, a shirt for a mechanic. There's no one specific time of the year where people will only be searching for mechanic stuff. They'll potentially be searching throughout the year. So the more evergreen sales you do, they won't fluctuate as high and you won't get the, the massive highs of a trending design, but you'll get steady sales. And if you have, you know, 500 designs on your Redbubble and you're constantly getting these steady sales, you're going to be making regular income that you can almost predict month to month because of these designs. And the third way you could approach Redbubble is as your own independent designer, you have your art style established, you have the stuff that you love creating, and you just want another platform to sell it. Do it. In that case, you might, because you're not, uh, you're not researching niches or trends or that kind of stuff, you might have to do a little bit more work in your promotional side. So bringing followers from other parts of social media to your store and a little bit more work, but worth it in the long run because you'll you'll have a, your own brand set up with recognizable designs that people will instantly look at and know it's one of yours so it's a worthwhile route to take but 
No matter what route you take, all of these, these different approaches needs research. You need to see where the market is going. You need to keep an eye on what's trending on Redbubble. You know, often just go in and see, you know, what men's t-shirts are trending, what women's tank tops are trending. Hello, boy. <laughs> Hello, boy. So the bottom line is do your research. Don't just expect that Redbubble is a place where you can just put your stuff up, sit back, relax, and wait for the sales to roll in. Because like I've said before, the majority of people on print on demand sites will never ever make a sale. So if you're making sales now, you're in the very small percentage of people that are. And yes, you might look at other people that are making so many more sales than you and think, I'm never going to get to this point. Use what I've said in this video because this is stuff that I've done over March and April and it's made such a difference. So just implementing these things has made my sales just come out of nowhere. And I kind of keep blinking thinking, this is not real. And some days I don't get a sale at all thinking, oh my gosh, is the bubble burst? Is it over for me? But the trend, all the trends keep going up, which is so positive. So I hope this helps you guys. What I want to do is maybe in a couple of months time, I will revisit these points, see if I can improve, if I have any further advice for you. I'll give you an update on how my May and June went. And in the meantime, let me know how you guys are getting on. If there's anything else that I can help with, let me know. And I shall be back probably next week with a new video. Thanks guys. See you soon. Bye.